Today I'm going to talk to former Anabaptists. That would be Amish, Mennonites, Hutterites, etc. And I know that there are plenty of old order Amish who are able to get around the order, so to speak, and use cell phones because they don't have to plug cell phones into the grid. And I know that there are some of you not so modern Am Amish that have computers and your doctrine said that you may not use the internet, you can only use emails, but you use the internet anyway. I know this. I know how the um, human heart is because I have one. Now, of course, then there are other um, former Amish, former Mennonites, former Hutterites like myself. I'm not even former. I never was a part of the Amish per se. My mom and dad were who um, and they use the internet quite freely. But there is one thing in common with all these Anabaptists or former Anabaptists and current Anabaptists. They want to know who they are. They have a sincere desire to find out their roots. Well, today, I'm going to tell you your roots, and you'd better be ready. You'd better be prepared for what you are going to hear, because this is not what you've been told. You've been told you're Germans. You used a German Lutheran Bible, yet, according to my dad, I don't speak the language, by the way, but he does. He says the language that the Amish speak is not the same language as in the German Lutheran Bible. Now, it is very similar to Yiddish, but both Pennsylvania Dutch and Yiddish are a Germanic dialect, the um, Hebrew that's in the uh, Yiddish is makes it so that the Pennsylvania Dutch, Dutch language or the Amish language is very similar to the, to the Yiddish language. They can understand each other. So one can speak to, uh, let's say a, a Jew can speak Yiddish to an Amishman an Amishman can understand it, and an Amishman can speak his language, and a Jew can understand it. Now, in the past, uh, several years ago, I did a series called the Amish-Jewish Connection. And what I did was I pointed out similarities and names between the Amish and the Jews. And it's so much so that Jews that I have spoken to will say, oh, yeah, the Amish are Jews. But are they? Are they Germans or are they Jews? Which one is it? Oh, and what am I doing wearing this? Well, folks, as you can see right here, I want to go straight to it. This particular article is so long, I'm afraid to go to the top because it took me like 20 minutes to find this in this particular article. I'm going to go ahead and read this article first, and then I'll scroll to the top so you can see where it comes from, so you can look for it, and you can find it on the Internet and save it. Because this is paramount to understand who you are. As a nationality. All right, Lutheran edict against Saturday keeping. This whole this whole article is about how 
the Anabaptists, or most of them, were Sabbath keepers. Seventh-day Sabbath keepers. And they were treated like the Jews and dubbed as Jews for doing it, which is why I wear this on my YouTube channel. Because if the Sunday keepers are going to call my forefathers a Jew, then alongside the Jew, I will wear the yellow star. But does that make me a Jew? Question. All right. Let's see here. They go edict after edict after edict against these Sabbath keeping Anabaptists. Now we go to the Lutheran edict against Saturday keeping, as they say. Thus, Reformation, thus the Reformation only changed the name of the persecutor of the true Sabbath keepers from Catholic to the Lutheran Church, as J. Fritzner pro pro properly states in the case. After the Reformation, no better way of making Saturday keeping despised was found than to pronounce it a Jewish custom and to call those who do it Jews. That's right. That's why I wear this. Now, do I keep the Sabbath? Folks, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I keep the Sabbath if I have my computer plugged into the wall or if the meter outside is turning. No, I'm not going to tell you that. Am I required to do so? Well, when Yehoshua changed the law to say the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, he changed the commandment. Notice I said Yehoshua. You didn't recognize that name, did you? Well, the Messiah never changed his name, neither did his father. His name never was Jesus, and it never will be. It always and always shall be Yehoshua. All right? Now, I'm not going to sit here and read through this whole thing, but I'll do this. The epistle of Gustacus, Gustacus 1 to Finnish Sabbatarians. The next document we shall consider confirms this idea. It is an open letter addressed to the common people in Finland on account of their error. Oh, the common people in Finland on the account of their error. Because of hard times, they turn Jews and keep Saturday holy. When the hard times hit, they turn Jew by keeping as he said, Saturday holy, or the Sabbath holy. All right. Like I said, I don't want to, this would take me days, days, to read this whole article. So I'm going to go and scroll way up here. All right. And you'll see what the name of this particular, is: History of the Sabbath and the First Day of the Week, Part 2. This is a monstrosity large article about the Anabaptists and the Sabbath. Now, as I pointed out in previous videos, the Sabbath was never required on Gentiles anyway. Never was. When you go to, is it Exodus? We'll go to Exodus 31 and verse 12. And I want to go to Strong's Concordance. All right. We'll start here, and this is very critical. 
Yehovah. His name is not the Lord, it's Yehovah. Spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Does it say, Speak to the Gentiles? No, it does not. Saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep it as a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yehovah, that sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, it is holy unto you, and anyone that shall defiles it shall be put to death. Anyone who does any work therein, that soldier shall be cut off among his people. All right. The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Does it say the Gentile? It does say in other parts, the, the Gentiles that lives within your gates. Now, folks, as I have said many times before, that means the land of Israel. In the land of Israel. Now, they weren't in the land of Israel when they do that, but it says within your gates. It means inside the land of Israel. Okay. Now, I'm, I wasn't come to talk about the Sabbath. What this particular video is going to talk about is just who are the Anabaptists? Are they Jew or are they German? The answer is a little bit more complicated than that. So what I'm going to do first, um, I'm going to save that one. I'm going to go to DNA websites. I will first go to FTDNA and show you my dad's, what it shows is my dad's origins. All right. German, right? How do you explain this? Now, do I actually believe this? No, I don't. All right. Do I believe part of this estimate? Yes, I do. But I don't believe the whole thing. And I'll, I'll show you why. So they've got 76% British Isles. You know how the Amish, when they term outsiders, the English... How do you suppose, O oh Amishmen, how so much English has gotten into your family tree? There's a lot there. It's not that it's not this much, but there's plenty there. This particular website is claiming that my dad has a zero German in him. What is this 24% Southeastern Europe then? What is that? Let's go. Boom. What do you see? Italy and Greece. Now, I want to go to a scripture once again, I'm not saying that the Amish are Jews. Please do not misunderstand me. Joel 3. There's a very interesting scripture that talks about this. And you have to ask yourself, is it a, um, where is it? You have to ask yourself, is this a coincidence? For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall return, the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather the goey and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will judge them, not plead with them, but judge them there, for my people, for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now, 
it says down here, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? That would be Lebanon. And on the coastlands of Pelasheth, that would be Gaza. Will you return unto me a recompense? And if you do, I will speedily return your recompense upon your own head because you have taken my gold and my silver and carried them to your temples, my pleasant things. The children of Judah, Yehuda, and the children of Jerusalem you sold unto the what? Greeks. Now, Rome was Greek before it was Rome. And in the days of Joel, it was Greece. So let's go look at this particular map once again. You say you're a German. Really? I beg to differ. Am I claiming that Amish are Jews? No. I'm claiming something. I'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so I have a, uh, a difficult time um, with FTDNA to try to get three different people on at the same time. And I can't memorize passwords and all this other sort of thing. So, but I can so look at this carefully and then we'll go to mine on FTDNA. All right, so watch this. I have to, I have, oh, I messed up. I have to drop this because it goes straight to my dad. All right. So we'll go to FTDNA and see, make sure it doesn't. Right, let's do this. Try it out. This thing is not working for me. All right. Told you this particular website is difficult. I might not be able to go to mine. Here we go. All right. So we'll go to mine. All right. This is mine. We'll go to my origins. What does it say here? West and Central Europe, 54%. 54 West and Central Europe would include France and Germany, would it not? 28% British Isles, 13% Southeast European. That's half of my dad's. Now, it, folks, what I'm saying is when we go to this other website, it's showing, well, at this particular website, it shows that my mom doesn't have any Southeastern Europe. But when we go to this other website, which is myheritage.com, it shows that my mom has a lot of Southeastern Europe in it. Remember, folks, most of the Amish in the USA are at, very, at the very least third cousins. We're all related is what I'm trying to tell you. So we're all the same people. So what are we? Once again, Southeastern Europe. Okay. Showing me 13%. But what is this? What's going on here? 5% Jewish diaspora? Sephardic? But the mystery goes deeper, folks. Much, much deeper when you go to myheritage.com. So let's look at them talking about my dad. Now, my heritage, or the other one said, uh, FTDNA said 76% English. This one says only 28.5% English. And this one says, 53.8% North and West European. This one is showing only 12% Eastern Europe, and they're saying uh, that would be 
uh, Balkans, let's see, what's it with the Balkans right here? Balkans, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Romania, Bulgaria, those places. Right? And 2% Middle East. Well, we got uh, uh, East European, 4.5% East European, which incidentally a lot of Jews went to. Right? So that's uh, a little strange, isn't it? They can't, they don't even, the two websites don't match up with each other, do they? No, they don't. Are you confused yet? Let's go to this one. Mine. On my heritage, they say mine is 82.8% uh, North and West European, 9.2% Scandinavian, which I know is Norway. Now, if I remember, I can point out to you the reason why. 5% or 5.8% uh, Africa and 5.0% North Africa. Now, that is the same number that they have for me as Sephardic Jewish. Well, the Sephardic Jews travel from Spain all the way through North Africa and to Syria back and forth a lot, you see. So there is something there that matches a little bit, but not by much, Middle East 2.3%, like my dad. All right, so we'll go to my mom. And once again, Northwest European, 51.1%. So North and West European, oh, uh, I see. North and West European only 51.1%? Is that German? Does that sound like a German to you? All right, 13% English, 12% Scandinavia, Norway, and 20% Greek and South Italian, and 3.4% Balkan. What's going on here, folks? You said you were German. At least that's what your forefathers told you. And incidentally, why do you Amish read out of the out of the Lutheran Bible anyway when he called your forefathers Jews? Hmm? Who are you? Who are we? Anabaptists and former Anabaptists, who are we? Well, as we read in this particular article, they dubbed our forefathers Jews. Yet, when people approach you, when the English, you say, approach you and ask, are you Jews? You say, no, we are German. Now, let's go to another, let's find this. So, I had uh, some discussions with a cousin of mine, a first cousin. We went back and forth, and he he's one that started the conversation with me. He wanted to know if his mother was, who is Sally Byler, was related to my mother, which is Barbara Byler. And I said, I haven't heard of anybody in the family named Sally Byler. And I don't think, I don't think so, but he's like uh, a first cousin twice removed to me. That's, you know, once removed, uh, he could claim that his mother is the sister of mine, but twice removed, no. So, him and I went back and forth, and way up here, he talks about how the Bylers, his Bylers, all have blonde hair and blue eyes. Where do they get it from? 
they got it because they married among the um, Scots. They pick up some Scots along the way. Many, many years ago. All right. So So I told him, you know, um, when he when he ex when he told me these things, I said my mom told me the Anabaptists were chased all over Europe just like the Jews were. So it was so there was a certain amount of kinship between the two. In fact, the Catholics and Protestants who persecuted the Anabaptists labeled the Seventh-day Anabaptists as Jews and treated them as such. I said, well, you just read. Okay, this is what I'm telling him. If you go from DNA website, like I did, you will find a lot of variation between sites when it comes to the Anabaptists. Well, there only could be one reason, folks. Because they were chased from town to town, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, from city to city, from nation to nation, and they picked up, they moved to another place where they were expelled out of, who greeted them with open arms, invited them into their Anabaptist community, but their Anabaptist community was a different nationality. And they were friendly to the Jews. They had a kinship with the Jews, therefore, some of this happened. Show you down here where he uh, way down here. He says the Amish have several genetic mutations seemingly brought on by too much inbreeding that happens when people are restricted to a small population by religious belief constrictions. The Amish do try to avoid that problem by marrying outside their limited social circles, going to the next Amish settlement down the road, etc. I'm probably lucky that my great-grandfather Jonah Byler married a Mennonite named Kurtz. Plenty of Kurtz is among the Amish too. Maybe he didn't know that. But that my grandfather Charles Jonah Byler married a uh, McQuiston, Scots-Irish, and that my father married a prophet whose father was from Tennessee. Luther Prophet married a Jackson, son of a Jack, equal to equals a Viking. That makes for a pretty good gene pool. There was a famous story about a Jewish peddler, listen up folks, who had a daughter who fell in love with the son of an Amishman from New Wilmington in western Pennsylvania. What's in western Pennsylvania, folks? Mountains? Please remember this. When I go to on to the next articles. They, after all, spoke a similar dialect of the old German that the Amish still speak. That's right. Because Yiddish and Pennsylvania Dutch are almost the same. So this Jewish girl fell in love with an Amish boy. Well, well, well. How often has that happened? The style of dress was very similar. Both parents were forgiving and accepting of the marriage, such is not often the case. Now, if in modern times both, both are forgiving of such a marriage, how much more do you think this happened among the Jews and among the Anabaptists before the Ordung, as they say. My dad says they didn't call it Ordung, they call it something different, but it means order before modern technology came. How much more of this do you think actually happened? Well, I'm going to point out to you something, folks, that's going to shock you. All right. This is Stephen Petersheim. He is a first cousin twice removed to second cousin to both my dad and my mom. Yes, my mom and dad are cousins, third cousins. Stephen Petersheim 
appears to be 15% Jewish. I looked in this family tree. They are all of the Amish descent. Here's what his looks like, North and Western Europe. Uh, of that is uh, English is 63.7%. And 18.5% Scandinavian. 4.8% Ashkenazi Jew. And 10.9% Sephardic Jew. And 2.1% West Asia. Well, there are a lot of practicing Jews a day that have that kind of DNA. I kid you not. Does that make Stephen Peter Scheim a Jew? You see, folks, the Amish and Jews do have a connection. Years ago, when I did those videos, the Amish and Jewish connection, Well, today I'm vindicated. I was right. I've got proof now. And you'll see a whole lot of this over and over and over again if you bother to look. For instance, let me show you something. Um, let's do my dad's overview. This is mine. This is mine. I'll find my dad's. All right, let's do this. Overview. All right. Look at all the DNA matches that my dad has all around the world. Do you notice something here? Obviously the most outside the US is Switzerland. Mm -hmm. That's completely understandable. Look how much in France even more than Germany. You gonna say you're German now? Hmm? You gonna say you're German now? Look how far this goes. Yes, it goes to Spain. Yes, it goes to Italy. Yes, Finland. Yes, Belgium, Ireland, New Zealand the Czech Republic, Russia, Hungary, South Africa. Well, 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 it's time for me to read you a letter. Where is it? Do I have it up here? I hope I do. There it is. Time for me to read you a letter, folks. This is on AmishAmerica.com slash Amish dash names slash. Philip from Holland. Hi. I know, now this is broken English, folks, because he's from Holland. I know not all Amish people came from Switzerland. We have some families still over here in Holland, Netherlands. I know that some of them went to South Africa instead of the USA. Why? Let's read on. Even in times of the Second World War, some of my Jewish forefathers changed their religion to Amish. What? His Jewish forefathers can't be, or can it be, changed their religion to Amish because the Nazis didn't, as he put it, hate, but should read you know, you gotta you gotta expect his English to be limited. So we'll say person. The the um, the Nazis didn't persecute the Amish. Wow. 
this, folks, happened over and over and over again because the Anabaptists did not persecute the Jews. And so some Jews sought them for a safe haven for a cover. This happened generation after generation after generation because the Anabaptists did not discriminate against the nationalities. But they left, they went and left Europe anyway. My cousin's names are all Eli, Levi, Jonah, and Amos, and the last name was not particularly Jewish. They had changed the last name in 1939 from Biard into Kaufman. Since 10 years, we have lost contact. So there has been a connection. I always wondered about how they knew about the name since they have been living in Holland and Belgium and not in the USA, so far as I know. You see what's going on here, folks? I was right. Now, My mom and dad, when we were younger, we were, we were not very well off. But when we were little children, they didn't take us to movies. But they did take us to one. One. The Exodus. So, to those of you who are former Amish, former Hutterite, former Mennonite, or currently, you might want to check out this movie. The Exodus. I don't think this is the same movie. Um, wow. Okay, let's go to the Exodus movie. Yeah, the 1960 film, I believe this is the one right here. Yeah. And since then, folks, since I saw that movie, Our whole family, to one extent or another, especially my dad and mom and myself, had a very special place in our hearts for the people of Israel, for the Jews. Okay? Which is why I wear this in their honor. Now, What else? So I've done that. I've done that. All right. Box. I feel like I'm missing something here. But maybe I have about covered it all. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. So. I am pretty vocal, you might say, on social media, including Facebook. And uh, one of my cousins, because, you know, I boldly pledge my allegiance to the people of Israel and the king of Israel. And he said, one of my cousins said, well, if you don't like it here in America, because I referred America to Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, why don't you just leave? All right. Here's another reason why I refer to America as Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you uh, who like books, uh, it would be wise of you to read these two books by Edwin Black. Edwin Black is a Jew. 
the IBM and the Holocaust, and War Against the Weak, Eugenics, and America's Campaign to Create a Master Race. You see, folks, it did not start with Nazi Germany. No. It started in America. And when we go down here, I've did I've done a um, video on this. It's called "Did America Help Exterminate the Jews?" This this video right here. Um, you can you it would be a good idea for you to watch the video if you haven't watched it already. In it, I read the. Um, a art an article about Margaret Sanger and how and who she wanted to get rid of and how Margaret Sanger is an idol who is worshipped by progressives and the entire Democrat Party in the United States and how this particular uh, article the horrifying roots American roots of Nazi eugenics points out that presidents of both parties, Republican and Democrat, were eugenicists that agreed with these people who later educated Joseph Mengele. Those of you who don't know who Joseph Mengele is, you better get yourself an education real fast. The Carnegie Institution. The Carnegie Institution is a great big science philanthropy organization. What were they doing back then? nineteen oh four the Carnegie Institution established a laboratory complex at Cold Springs Harbor on Long Island that stockpiled millions of index cards on ordinary Americans as researchers carefully plotted the removal of families bloodlines and whole peoples You Anabaptists, you former uh, Amish, you former Hutterites, you former Mennonites, former Amish. Does that sound familiar to you? Does that ring a bell to you? Didn't your forefathers talk to you about this? From Cold Springs Harbor, eugenics advocates agitated in the legislatures, that's the state governments of America, as well as the nation's social service agencies and associations. The Harriman Railroad Fortune paid local charities such as the New York Bureau of Industries and Immigration to seek out Jewish Italian and other immigrants in New York and other crowded cities and subject them to deportation, trumped up confinement, or forced sterilization. The Rockefeller Foundation helped found a German eugenics program and even funded the program that Joseph Mengele worked in before he went to Auschwitz. As I said, if you have not, oh, I'm going to read this uh, paragraph here. The superior species the eugenics movement sought for was populated not merely by tall, strong, talented people. Eugenicists crave blonde, blue-eyed Nordic types. This group alone. alone.
they believed was fit to inherit the earth. In the process, the movement intended to subtract emancipated Negroes, immigrant Asian laborers, Indians, Hispanics, Eastern Europeans, Jews, dark-haired hill folk, <coughs> hope you Amish and Mennonite are listening. Poor people, the infirmed, and really anyone classified outside the gentrified genetic lines drawn up by, does it say German raceologists? American raceologists. You see folks, the Nazis learned their craft from the American progressive elite. Read the whole thing, folks. Eighteen solutions were explored in a Carnegie-supported 1911 preliminary report to the Committee of Eugenics Section of the American Breeders Association to study and report on the best practical means of cutting off the defective germplasm in the human population Point eight was euthanasia. The most commonly suggested method of eugenicide in America was a lethal chamber or a publicly located, locally operated gas chamber. So, to my cousin who basically told me to get the hell out if I didn't like this country, he and others need to understand that Nazi experimentation came from the United States. or publicly locally operated gas chambers. In 1918, Popano, the Army Venereal Disease Specialist during World War I, co-wrote the widely used textbook Applied Eugenics, which argued from a historical point of view, the first method which presents itself is execution. So are you proud to be an American now? Oh, I didn't answer the question. Anabaptists, who are you? All right, I'm going to tell you who you are. You are, at the very least, the mixed multitude of the people of Israel. What? I said... You are, at the very least, at the very least, please do not misunderstand what I'm saying. You are, at the very least, the mixed multitude of Israel. Written about in the book of Exodus. Let's go there. You're clearly related to the Jews now. What happened here? All right. I've pointed out that you're clearly related to the Jews now. Why is this not um, coming up? Exodus 12 and verse 38. This is the Exodus, folks. This is after the 10th plague. What happened? 
Verse 31, and he called for Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh did, by night and said, rise up and go from among my people. Get out of here. Both you and the children of Israel, go and serve Jehovah, not the Lord, as you have said. And also take your flocks and your herds that you have said, and be gone and bless me also. Just to prove my point, go to Strong's Concordance. So there is no room for movement here. Go serve Yehovah. The Lord is not Israel's Elohim. Yehovah is. All right? And the Egyptians were urging upon the people. They might send them out of the land in haste. There is going to be another exodus, folks. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I'm telling you, you are, you Anabaptists, and descendants of Anabaptists, you are, at the very least, the mixed multitude of Israel. Listen carefully. We are all dead men, and the people took their dough before it was leavened, and their kneading troughs, and bound it in their clothing upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed see what it says right here yes they asked they inquired of the Egyptians they asked for jewelry and silver and gold and raiment and Jehovah not the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they would lent them so that they you know gave them what they asked for and they spoiled the Egyptians they plundered them And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about a 600,000 on foot that were men besides children, and a mixed multitude. The word mixed in Hebrew means Arabia. That does not mean mixed peoples are Arabians. It means Arabians are mixed peoples. Okay, so let's let's... We'll, we'll stick with the, the the correct meaning here. It is mixed. All right, mixed company. What were the mixed company? They were like you and me. You former Anabaptists, you current Anabaptists. You are mixed. You have... Hebrew blood mixed all up in you, every single one of you. Regardless of whether the DNA websites say so or not, because they are only estimates according to a particular pool that they brought in. You know, it's just an estimate. But the one thing that you will find in common in every single family, the Swaris, the Bylers, the Yoders, the Peaches, every one of them, Some of the family members will show them having Jewish DNA. Can't get around it. And I've proven it to you. All right. Um, a mixed multitude went also up with them, with their flocks and their herds and very much cattle. So not even the mixed multitude will remain. Now my dad is probably almost jumping up and down saying, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. When he, when he hears me reading this and explaining this. Because this has been a point my dad has been trying to make for years. And of course myself that if you have just a smidge of Jewish ancestry in you, you are at the very least of the mixed multitude. Now, at that point, possibilities are endless. You could be, in fact, of one of the lost ten tribes of Israel. But nobody knows who they are yet, because they are lost. But that's a whole other subject. What I'm saying to you, 
Anabaptists, former Anabaptists, listen to me very, very carefully. You will have to leave along with the Jews this world when the new covenant is set up in Jerusalem. When the kingdom of Israel is set up in Jerusalem. When the time of the Gentiles comes to an end, as Paul mentioned in Romans 11 verses uh, 25 verses through 28, when the time of Gentiles comes to an end, all Israel shall be saved. They will be gathered from one end of the sky into the other. They are the elect, as Paul wrote in Romans 11, verses 25 through 28, for the patriarch's sake. Because the time of the Gentiles it is indeed going to be coming to an end. It's going to be over, over, over for the Gentiles. But not even a mixed multitude of the Jews is going to remain in Egypt, figuratively speaking. Not a one. So the angels will come to your house too. Because you are at the very least a mixed multitude of Israel. Now you know who you are. Shocking, isn't it?